All right, everyone, so we got another fig to review for you guys today. It's called Cavalieri, and I'm going to make a playlist, I think, of all the varieties that we've been reviewing here, um, just because I think they're easier to find that way, and um, it may help a lot of you guys out. This is undoubtedly, I think, one of the tastiest varieties that exists for a number of reasons. It has a really interesting acidity to it. Uh, it has a nice, interesting cherry flavor to it. When I say cherry, I mean it really does taste like a cherry. Almost like an artificial cherry flavor, a cherry lozenge in a way, it's like a cherry candy. You can see down here in the trunk, it's a pretty old tree. I've had this now for I think three or four years. My friend Maddie was so nice enough to give me this years ago. And uh, this one originates from Paolo Maloney's collection in Italy. And Paolo, for those of you guys who don't know who he is, he has an incredible collection of Italian figs in Italy. He probably has more Italian varieties than I think anybody. Um, he really is working to preserve genetics, uh, not just of figs, but of other species of plants. And uh, he has a beautiful property. You can actually visit him. You can go there and pick figs, get a tour. You can stay there. Uh, it's a beautiful place. One day I'll go. Um, so I'm really excited to have figs from his collection, and this one in particular, in my opinion, is one of his tastiest, or at least I know that this is one that he highly regards. This is also a variety that not just is from him, but it's kind of widely grown throughout Italy. Uh, there's definitely uh, nurseries that carry this fig. I think Belfiore Nursery carries this fig as well. There's probably some other Italian nurseries, but to get the real original one, um, you have to be a bit careful, I think. There's maybe a couple of them out there that might be slightly different. I'm not entirely sure from different sources. It's hard to say, but uh, I think Cavalieri translates directly to knight in English. So this is the, the knight fig, um, like a, a knight in armor. And then you can see Let's talk about the tree itself here. You can see it's actually been quite productive for me this year. I've gotten plenty of fruits off of this tree. This branch, these branches over here are much more productive and I have a feeling it's because they're a bit more mature. Um, they're on thicker wood here. On this branch, this system of branches here, which we've have, we have picked some figs off of here. It's not as productive as it looks and I don't think it's been productive as I had hoped because I just have too many branches, too many thinner, smaller, uh, less productive branches on it. Um, and if you can limit the number of branches, I find at least in a container, here's another one. They just are more productive trees. I'm, I'm probably not gonna prune this too much, but I'm gonna take out this, this smaller growth here um, and try to get this tree to form the right form next year. Uh, if it puts out too many thin branches next year, like it, it did this year, the, again, again, the production is just gonna be a little bit lower than I'd like. However, I don't think it's probably the most productive fig. It's probably somewhere in like the medium range of productivity. Um, you know, it's not like Black Madeira over here as an example. That is just insanely productive to the point where it's like very picturesque. You know, I mean, look at this. This is just kind of crazy. Um, however, it has also been said that Cavalieri is a bit late and I don't agree with that. So far, I mean, it's it, it did get a head start in my greenhouse and it did pretty well in the greenhouse. You know, it got more of a prime position in there. However, um, it's ripening 90 days after pinching. So that's a really good sign. Same thing with my Coldenon Blanc here. It's, a, it's ripening 90 days after pinching, whereas my Black Madeira as an example, which I, I use as the standard for very late varieties, that takes easily 100, 110, I think more along the lines of 110 to 120 days after pinching for you know these fruits to be ripe. So if you got a fig like this, let's say 110, 120 days later, Black Madeira will be ripe, whereas this one will be ripe 90 days later, which is really impressive. It, it actually ripened very early for me this year, and that's a great sign because it's not the most rain resistant, or I should say split resistant fig. Um, it does have really bad struggles here with our humidity and with our rain. Um, the skin seems fine, but it splits down the side of the fig. It doesn't 
Um, it also splits at the eye, it has a tendency to do that, but it splits down the side. Um, luckily though, when this fig is a bit more underripe, it's still really good. And I find that the flavor is very interesting. I don't have many figs like it. It has a, an, a very unusual level of acidity, it has a very unusual cherry flavor that is legitimately a cherry and it's very apparent. Um, it really tastes like an artificial cherry flavor. So th those of you guys who like cherry candies, like a cherry lozenge in a way, it has that flavor to it. And it's really uh, something special, I think. Here's another tree I have of Cavalieri that I think is also on its own roots. It took a bunch of air layers off of the tree when, it, when I first got it. The tree is just quite vigorous. It has a lot of vigorous growth. You could see the pretty wide nodes, node spacing here. It does eventually slow down, and when it does slow down, it'll fruit. But until it slows down, it won't. And the productivity you can see on this tree is quite low because of the very wide node spacing. So we're not gonna prune this too much, both of these trees that I have. Um, trying to encourage less pruning to hopefully get um, you know, a lot of growth next year, the right amount of growth next year to then get us the right amount of fruits and hopefully it'll become a productive variety for me. Um, not that this tree over here hasn't been productive, I would say, but compared to some others, I think it's, it's not as productive. Um, so those are the, you know, the things I want to mention about the tree. Uh, I don't really know what it'll do here without a head start. So it does get in the greenhouse every year, but let's taste it. Let's taste the fig here. This really, like I said, is something special. I'm just setting up the, the tripod here. Sorry, guys. Alrighty. So, um, like I said, it's got a nice, interesting cherry flavor. Let me show you guys what the fig looks like. Closer look at this guy. That's a pretty good view, and I know it's a bit bright, it seems like, on the camera right now. But it's really quite good. Uh, let's give it a shot. Let's give it a little taste test. Wow. That one was really good. That one's the best one I've ever had, I think. Very thick. It's a really nice fig. Wow. And you know what? I could have let it hang a couple days, but it's already got the perfect flavor. A lot of the acidity that I'm, I'm picking up in prior fruits, I think is maybe because they're picked a bit underripe, perhaps, and that acidity is kind of going away. That cherry flavor is also kind of going away. This is a really nice berry flavor that's thick, jammy, dense, sweet. Complex. The skin is quite thin. But the actual synconium of the fig is quite thick. So you're eating kind of a thicker shell, even though the skin is very thin but the inside is very jammy and very dense. It's kind of like eating a cold dom. In a way, it's very close. So for me, this is a winner. It's a, it's a 4.5, that was a 4.5 for me. Um, one of the best figs I have in my collection. I had thought that that could beat a Black Madeira and uh, it's close. It's close in terms of flavor. Um, you know, flavor aside, flavor alone, it's one of the best tasting figs. In terms of texture, it's also one of the best tasting figs. So for me, it has a better flavor, I think, than Col de Dom, but not as good of a texture as Col de Dom. Um, kind of like where I put Black Madeira, that Black Madeira has a better flavor. Um, it has a similar, you know, ish Black Madeira type flavor, but not not exact. It's, I wouldn't say it's you know a similar type, but it's a similar taste profile, I think. So that's Cavalieri for you guys. Um, I did sell some trees of it. 
I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to have any more. I don't think I have any more of them over there. Um, but check out Figbit. I might have some listed uh, later. I'll post about it on my Instagram as well, my Facebook. Um, but we have, we'll have some cuttings of it for sale. I'm not going to take too many cuttings. So, yeah, you got to kind of have to get them while they're hot, while I have them. Um, and again, be careful of the different sources of Cavalry. I'm sure there's different sources. This one comes originally from Paulo himself uh, at some point down the line, you know. Um, so again, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. If you know somebody who's interested in growing figs, show them these videos of the taste tests that we're doing. Show them the playlist that we're going to create on all the different fig tastings that um, I've been doing this year. Okay, guys, take care. We'll see you all soon. Have a nice day.